Hi crocheters, this is Crafty Crystal. Uh, I'm here with my third and last version of the uh, video for making this square granny, square diamond granny. Um, hopefully I did it good enough this time, paying attention on the corners, paying close attention on the sides and how to add them. And I hope this answers everybody's questions and makes you very uh, happy to make your own and enjoy it. You can take four of these and connect them together and it'll cover a double bed real nicely. And uh, two of these side by side with, a, with a, a nice wide trim around it would make a nice cover for a twin. Other than that, it's a nice little uh, uh, lap gown for you. Okay, let's get started. These are the yarns I'm using for this setup. Uh, they're all, all but one, and that's the with love. All but one are the Red Heart Super Saver. Uh, this one that looks smaller, all the Red Heart Super Saver come in seven ounce except for the variegated. All variegated are five ounces. So this is plum pudding right here, five ounces. This one is Pretty in Pink, 7 ounces. This one is Turqua, T-U-R-Q-U-A. This is the Red Heart with Love, and it's called Blue Hawaii. And the last one, one I use quite a lot of actually, is the Red Heart Royal. Okay, now these here... These five skeins will get me to the um, third level. One of each. Okay. Okay, let's start the granny square itself. I'm using an eye hook, number nine, 5.5 5 millimeter. Okay. I'm going to start with a double magic circle. Come forward and go over my two small fingers twice. Hold that there. Take my feed. Hold it back here. And that's just to give me a little tension there. Makes it easier to make my stitch. Come under these two small ones here. My hook pointed up. Turn it down. Grab the feed line. And pull it back up. That twists it. Now when I go back to my feed line and pull my other loop through, I've made myself a slip knot. Okay. I really don't want to get too close and my hands run out of the film here. Okay. Now to start any uh, any granny square, any square granny square, has uh, four clusters to start. So we're going to make four, three double crochet clusters in this magic circle. And every corner has three chains, a chain three, okay? So we're going to start our first double. We'll do a chain three to start that one. And another double, and a double is wrap. We're going to go into the magic circle. If you're doing a regular piece, you go into your next base stitch. Go through two loops on your hook. Go through two loops on your hook, and that's your double. Now we're going to chain three and come back into the magic circle. Just like that. We're going to do four of these little clusters. The chain three between each. So you come back and we'll finish over here, okay? Okay, I have my four 
three double crochet cross clusters. I have my chain three here. I have my little tail and I have my two rings. So we're going to take the little tail. We're going to pull it for a minute to see which one tightens. Do you see that one tighten? Okay. Now on the same end as your tail sticking out, that's the side of that ring you want to pull. The second one tightens down real nice. Then you take your short string and you pull it long. And this is why I like magic rings. It is wrapped around twice with literally 24 stitches holding it. 2 times 12. So I don't have to worry about it. It cannot come done. So I want to count that 3, 2, 1, and this is the one I want to go into. So I'm going to go into the back of this one. And I want to go into the top. This guy will stay out of the way. The top of the one under it. There. Now I've got under two strands, so it'll be nice and tight. And I'll go ahead and slip stitch that. There. Nice tight connection. And now I want to mention at this point for the inner square you'll be doing two layers of each color. First color is always on front. The second color you will always turn your part over and work on the back. And the reason for that is when we do the corners we're going to be going back and forth like this and it would change your design. Your design would be smooth on one side and front and back and forth on the corners. So that just makes it look better. So we turn the part, making sure our loose thread comes up under our hook. And you can either slip stitch into this or just go ahead and do three chains. That's our first double crochet in our corner cluster. So we'll make two more. And chain three. Go right back into the same corner. Like that. And on this on the uh, this row and every other row. There is no chain whatsoever between one cluster and the other except on the corners. Okay? So we'll go directly into the next corner. Row 2 is actually nothing more than four corner clusters. I'm going to go ahead around to here. I'll meet you back. Okay, back around. Three, two, one. Okay. Back in here. Catch me a couple strands. Oh, cooperate, Bella. There we go. Okay. All we have to do is tie off. Now this is the back side. And I want to recognize the back side. Because every new color starts on the front, ends on the back. Now here's the pretty in pink. And 
we're just going to slip stitch off to, onto any inside hole and we add a new color. This one we only have one inside hole on each side, but every color is the same. So, one, two, three. And I'm going to pull my end down, tighten my base. There we go. And put our three double crochets. There we go. That's how you start every new color. Just make sure you're on the front. And you just go on doing your corner clusters. You put no um, no stitches between your clusters. Only chains are on your corners. One two, three, and there we go. So, go directly to your next center. See, very simple. This is the construction of your entire granny square. directly to your next cluster. Um, you want to do uh, two of each of your colors. You've got five colors. So we'll end up with ten rows. Okay, I'm going to add the Torqua now. I'm going to catch this tail. Excuse me. I'm on the front now. See, my tails are in back. And come back to the front. You always add a new color on the front. Okay. So I'm going to slip stitch. Okay, that looks kind of short, so I'll go one, two. And I'm going to do my set. I'll go one. Do this just like I've done the other, the pretty and pink. Every color add on is done the same. Every double row set is done the same. Do one row front, turn, do one row back. So I'm going to go ahead and do the uh, Torqua, both rows, two, three, and I'm going to come back and tie on my blue Hawaii and do that one, and I'll come back with my royal, and when I'm ready to do the uh, slip stitch edge around the outside, I'll be back again. So all you need to do is you have your first two colors, you've added on your third color, then you add on your fourth color, then you add on your last color. When you've done the second row of the last color, come back and we'll work on the slip stitch or on the outside. Okay? Okay, this is the last of the uh, second border of the royal. And we're just going to slip stitch it into our first chain. And I'm going to come back to the front. 
You want to do your slip stitch row on the front. Now, this is considered the stitch. So we'll put two stitches when we come back. So I'm going to chain one. And I'm going to go into the front only of my next stitch. Okay? Now right in here, in this chain one space, I'm going to put a marker that does a couple things. Most important of which is where I start my next stitch. Um, my uh, corner clusters. Okay. Now all you do is go down the front loop only of every one of these and do a slip stitch. Make sure your slip stitches are as loose as the stitches underneath so that they don't bunch. Let me show you here. Okay. See the length of the slip stitches and the length of the regular stitches are the same. Pardon me. If you did it tight, like this, you're going to end up drawing your material and you don't want to do that. The purpose of this is not to draw and finish your edge, but to allow a, a place for you to add your corners onto. Um, one thing about the corners, on your chain threes, you want to go to the front edge of each of the chain stitches, especially here, make sure your, your loops are loose before you continue on the sides. You don't have to um, do any extra stitches at all. Just make sure your stitches are loose and it won't pucker or bunch it or curl it. Okay? Okay. This is the center. This is the center of my side. I've done one stitch in the top of each of these, so I have three. I'm going to do one extra chain, and then I'm going to go on, continue on doing one in each of these. Like that. And I'm going to come back in here, put a little marker there on my center. Do that all the way around, and I'll meet you back at our beginning, okay? Okay. Now, remember when we started here, I said our slip stitch counts as the uh, third one in this cluster, the third stitch. So we're just going to do two more of these. I'm going to come back in that same stitch and tie my knot there. Okay, now this stitch counts as the first stitch, so this stitch here will count as the second stitch from the center, which is our extra stitch. That way we skip over the knot, we don't have to worry about it. This knotted area here is the skip stitch. And we come to this next one, okay? So we'll do this side first because um, we'll get rid of the whole slip stitch problem. 
Okay, we're starting back with our center color on the middle of our sides. You don't connect to the exact middle because this is your anchor point. Since we're starting where the knot was, so we don't have to worry about it later. Here's your knot. Here's the one next to it. We're going to go behind that slip stitch. And I like to go through two threads. It's usually the one behind and a little to the side of. You don't want to go all the way across because that will take care of your back ridge. So I like to get two threads. Here's your slip stitch. And right in back of it, right in front of there, and back of here. I like to get that one too. That gives you a nice tight side edge. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to slip stitch onto that. And this is thin thread, so I'm going to go ahead and double loop. Tighten it. I'm going to chain one. Oh, this is going to be trouble. Tighten it down really good. There we go. Otherwise, I'm going to leave too big of uh, a bite there. Okay, now. I went ahead and I took this front loop here and I came behind the front loop of my chain one and I caught myself two strands. So I can just pull this out and go through there. And I wrap first. So this is the center of our side. This is how we start every V side on every level. Okay? We're starting our second level and we'll be putting a third level on. So, one, two, three. And another cluster. And here's our one, two, see. One, two, three, okay? So we're going to go to our middle one here. We're going to go in back of the front. And I'm going to catch a second stitch, second strand. Pull up a stitch. Now I just made a single stitch on this side. See how it makes a little hole here, a little gap? And we've got a little gap on this side. Okay. So now we're going to do our second level. And if we just start our second level now here, we won't have it anchored anywhere. So what we're going to do is we're going to chain one, two. And we're going to skip this next stitch and go into the very next stitch. That would be the, third, the first stitch of this cluster over here. Go behind. Grab two slips two stitches complete a single crochet now we have another gap here okay now we turn our work because we're working on the second level of color now we're going to come back down into this gap we made here this first gap just like on this side, and we're going to make two double crochets. Now 
Now you can see we have a gap and a cluster. We made our cluster in this gap. Now we go right to our corner and make a corner cluster. Okay, and one, two, three. Like I said at the beginning, every single corner cluster is exactly the same. Three doubles, three chains, three doubles. Now we're going to come right back down into this hole that we had here. And make a cluster. And now we have to anchor it. We can't just leave it hanging. So we skip one stitch and we come into the next stitch. And what we're going to do is we're going to back in from the front. We're going to try to back in from the front. There we go. It's a single crochet. And tie off. There. I wanted to pop back at you with a tip. It's helped me a lot. I did some uh, messing around with it. Um, when you want to crochet, you just want to crochet. You don't want to stop and mess with, where's those two threads I wanted to go into, you know? Oh, yeah, there they are. So before I start a color, I go and I, from the front, I find each two stitches I want to go into. I have a little tag here. I pulled one in through this, I pulled, went down to the second stitch and put, pulled one in through this. So I have the exact two stitches I want to go through on each tag. Now what I like best about this is when I come back this way, this is the part you start at. This is the part that you go in from the back and you have to try to I try to switch it around and come in through the front so I can find the right two stitches. But I already marked it from the front with the right two stitches. And that's going to make it really easy to finish this side. Do that for every double set you do. And when you come to the last set, when you're ready to do the last color, which is uh, in this case is the uh, Blue Hawaiian, one of these you're going to skip two stitches and one you're going to skip one. And you decide which, but you want to end on this corner. Okay? So you can skip two here and then go to the corner here. You can skip one here and then go to the corner here. So on the next one, I will decide which I want to do. And I think I'll probably do two here, one, two, probably go to here to the third one and then do the corn, then mark the corner and I'll do that on both sides. So anyway, that's just a little tip to help you while you're going and uh, I will see you back here when I'm ready to do the, the uh, Blue Hawaiian, okay? We have Our half of our center square. Just like that. See? So if you get confused, that's what you should have. You should have half of your two corners and a full corner. Half of your two corners 
in your full corner, okay? And we've got the gap here, like we would have when we have a, a chain three. We have a gap here, like we would have if we had a chain three. And we have our chain three hole here. So this is where we're going to start our next color. But we need to anchor the top of it again. So here is our connection. We're going to skip one and we're going to come up to the next one. Uh-huh. Okay. Connect our pretty and pink. Bring that through there. Okay. I'm going to wrap. Do a cluster. Now this again is considered half of a corner cluster. It comes off of a corner cluster. And it represents half of a corner cluster. And except for how you start your middle and how you connect your sides, making your corner clusters, your corner sides, is just like making your full squares. Only each side has a beginning and an end instead of going all the way around and coming back. Cat, you're in my light. Somehow I knew he was going to come in and help me. <laughs> okay. I'm determined to finish this color first. This half. Okay. Now you won't be finished with your last cluster on any side until you come down to this little gap between your edge and your lower cluster. So you do a cluster in that gap. And here's the stitch that you connected on to make that anchor. So you're going to skip one stitch and you're going to go into the next stitch, the back of it. And chain one, two, and here's your next stitch, here's your next stitch. Skip one, go to your next stitch, go in back of it, and do a single crochet. Now you turn your work, so you go ahead and complete your color. I'll connect to the other side for you one more time. Okay. Second row back side. We come into this last gap, which is the gap between our main triangle, our main square, and our corner. And do my set of three. Now, here's where we connected. We skip one, and we go to the next one. And I'm going to come in front to back. Some way.
head off. There we go. We bring it back to front to add our next color. Okay? You can see it looks just like that. That's what we've added on. Part of our corner cluster, our side, our corner, our side. Part of our corner cluster, our side, our corner, our side. See? Okay? I'm going to come back and uh, I'm going to go ahead and add the um, Torqua. And I'll come back in the second layer of Blue Hawaii, okay? When you're ready to do the last color, which is uh, in this case is the uh, Blue Hawaiian. One of these you're going to skip two stitches and one you're going to skip one. And you decide which, but you want to end on this corner. Okay? So you can s skip two here and then go to the corner here. You can skip one here and then go to the corner here. So on the next one, I will decide which I want to do. And I think I'll probably do two here. One, two, probably go to here to the third one and then do the corn then mark the corner. And I'll do that on both sides. So anyway, that's just a little tip to help you while you're going. And uh, I will see you back here when I'm ready to do the the uh, blue Hawaiian, okay? I got set up to put my last color on before I get to the edge. Here's my tip. Told you you want to do the one right in the tip. And I believe I told you I was going to um, maybe skip, skip one on this and skip two to the end. And being a female, I decided to change my mind. Being a crocheter, I decided to change my mind. So that gives me two reasons to be able to do what I want to do. Okay, so I skipped two stitches and I made my marker in the next. And I did the same here. And that gives me one stitch between my last marker and the corner. And we leave the corner in after this round because we won't be using it. We'll be crocheting over it. I'll show you that in a minute. Now, this last one is started a little different. You start your first row just the same as you did all the rest. Okay, so you come in here where you've marked it, go into your first gap, and you go ahead and come around here. But instead of going into the tip, into your next step, you're going to just chain three. and turn. And then go ahead and do your full set. Okay. And the rest of the row is done just like every other row. And I'll show you how we finish it. As I finish this set. Okay. I'll return. That was fast, huh? Wonderful what you can do with the camera. Okay. Now to end this side, okay, now remember I'm on the back side. On the front side, 
this is how I ended my back side. See? You see on the front? I ended the back on this side, or began my back side, I should say. And I came around over here to this end. This is my first corner, so I didn't tie it off. I left a long loop. That's so I can connect it to the last corner over here when I make it. Then with the front side, I moved over to the next corner in the same direction I'm crocheting. Okay, now let me come back around here. So, I'm in the next section and I'm coming back here and I'm not, I can do one of two things. I can either go into here and slip stitch and then go into there or I can just come across and slip stitch. Now, both of these have upsides and downsides. And this will be strictly up to you how you want to do it. When you come back with the next color, you're going to go around this and into here. Okay? And you can see how that brings down these two corners right onto the edge anyway. Okay, so the other way would be to slip stitch this down into here and then slip stitch into there, which is just an extra step. And then you would have to compete on the next color into going into the same two stitches that you went in for your slip stitch. So this to me is the simplest way. If you prefer to slip stitch and then slip stitch, that's totally up to you. When you're the crocheter, you can change your mind. You can crochet it whatever way you want. Change the color, change the style, change the whole design if you like. You are the creator of this thing. Okay? Okay. Now, turn it back over to the front. And I'm going to turn it in the direction I've been crocheting. And when I come back with my other one, this is where I'll be connecting to. When I come back with my second row, I'll be going backwards this way. And I'll connect here. And that gives me the continuity all the way around. See there? Okay. And then when we put the dark blue on, it'll tie right into here. Right there. You have your outside row connecting to your, your outside diamond. Connecting to your inside diamond. Now the next row out won't happen that way because it'll be a bigger edge and you won't end up with the dark blue touching the dark blue. Okay. Alright, so um, going around, like I said, you just uh, pull out my little tab here. Connect my color just like you did for every other color on the inside. No problem. Just like that. And then when you get to the other side, you connect it just like you normally would, only you chain three, make your finish making your uh, bunch, and you turn it, make your bunch, go back this way, and then you'll slip stitch to your third chain in your first bunch over here. Okay, and then it'll look just like that. Okay, so I'll see you around when we're ready to put this final row on, okay? Yeah, I just finished my fourth corner here, and uh, I'm going to come over. This is the end of my very first corner I did. Didn't need to leave such a long loop or a long tail, but I figured it might get manhandled. 
I'm going to make sure it didn't come undone. And since it's already cut, let's pull the loop out. Okay. Now we're ready to turn it over and do our dark blue. In this case, it's royal. You can start anywhere you like. Um, it is convenient when you're starting to figure out where you want to start your slip stitch row. And the slip stitch row, I either like to start absolutely in the center or um, right between the last cluster and the chain three. So this is the easiest one to figure out when you're trying to figure out how you're going to do this to set up your location. Because all you do is you start your first dark cluster in the corner. Just like that. Okay, let me work my way over to the center. Okay, I did this side, this part of the side from the corner to the center. And now you wrap like normal. And I'm going to go down into two stitches that I use this marker for. And you notice I'm going under this center. And I'll finish doing my set in those same two stitches. And then go on to the next one just like normal. See, that's putting my next outside row connected to the inside row. But because we back set it, you can see that we still have our single edge around here. Okay. And you go on around doing it just like every other row. Turn, go back, and do your second row. And tie off. You'll be tying off on a corner. I mean, pardon me, you would be tying off in the corner. That's where we're going to go and do our, start our slip stitch, just like we did a slip stitch row in this one. Okay? See you back then. <coughs> okay, I'm back around here. I've done my three slip stitch. I've done one, two, And right here, where I came over and did my slip stitch, I got one strand I can use for that slip stitch. And then you have come back, always count backwards, it really helps. One, two, three. And that lets you know that right down here is where you're going to make your knot. So you end up with your one, your one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And the knot is what you skip. You really don't want to try to go into the knot. 
really helps if it's out of the way. Okay. So now we're just going to go along and we're going to slip stitch in every front loop. Since we turned it, we're back on the front again. You see you got no tags. Okay. So just exactly like we did on the first round. Just go around and put your slip stitch all along your front ledge like that. Okay? Okay. I'm back around my beginning. And this is why I needed to make sure that I can find where I'm at. I did my three corner stitches. I got my one, my two, and right here. So I stick my three. And I have one, two, three. So right here. That's where I stick my knot. There we go. So I have my one, two, three. I have my one, two, three. Okay. Now we've got some serious tagging to do. We're getting into uh, quite a few layers now. And you don't want to play rip it. That means you don't want to start here and get out about this far and find out you're uneven. That you're, you're going to end up not coming to the end the same time the way you're supposed to. So what you want to do is make yourself some tags. Oh, you can use markers if you like, but tags are so much easier. Not counting our corner, we have 56 stitches from here to here. And that's going to come out to, we're going to have about seven double layers of colors. But we're still going to have that extra stitch. And instead of putting the extra stitch out here like I did, I'm going to put it in the middle. So the very first set makes more sense that way anyway. But the very first set, we're going to come into our middle stitch and we're going to skip two and come to the third one. And we'll go from there on both sides, okay? So first I'm going to make sure I've got my center stitch set. One, two, three. One, two, three. Okay, right here. So I'm going go back of this stitch. See how that comes up off of that? I'm going to go down into my material. I'm tagging, I'm tying it into this layer down here. And that's my center. Okay. Now since we're skipping two, we're skipping the third and the second of each of these first sets. So our first tag is going to be in the first side, the first stitch of each of these sets on either side. I want to get me a couple smaller needles here. This will help me tremendously. Okay. So, here's the front of my slip stitch. Here's the back of my slip stitch. And here's the stitch slanted behind it.
one, two, three. Here's the back of my slip stitch. Here's the one slanted behind it. There's my marker. After this, we skip one. So we're going to skip the first of this set, go to the middle. Back of the slip stitch. Slant. First slant behind it. You don't have to keep going back and forth. Middle of this set. But it helps you really understand that you are not um, getting out of balance. Okay. Now we're in the middle of this one, so we'll go to the very first of this set. We're skipping the second one, the third one, and going into the first stitch of the next set. Just like that. Okay, you don't have to watch me do the rest of these. I'm going to go clear out to the edge, and I'm going to make sure that my final set is right here. And for this one, I will loop it and tie it because um, I'll just show you. Go through the last half. These are a little bit harder. Back half of the stitch and the slant and back of it. These will end up coming off easier if they're handled a lot, and they're going to be handled a lot. So that one I just do a little tag stitch like that. Okay, um, I am going to tag all of mine before I come back and start this on this side to make sure that I haven't done any goofs on my counting, and I know where I'm going to end up at. I should end up at right here at the second row of my inside color out here which means we'll have two four six um, layers going beyond the point okay I'll be back um, so always even if you don't mark them it was good to mark at least every other one maybe the first marker of each set each uh, set of rows or maybe the last marker of each set of rows and then just come out and count your two 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 and make sure that you end up on your corner two 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 corner okay no problem okay now okay Tie on here. And that'll be my hole for the next layer. Yarn over. And we're going to do our full six double clusters in here. I mean, it's early in the morning, folks. I haven't had my coffee yet. <laughs> We're going to do a cluster of three. Chain three. And a cluster of three. All in that center. Whoops. I don't need you there. There we go. Pop that through there. Do my single crochet. Chain two. I'll be 
end there. To my single crochet and turn. We do our cluster back down here in the hole that we left with our single crochet. So we have our cluster anchored on the side and this anchor spot here becomes the hole for the cluster of the next corner which in this case is the pretty and pink. We do our set of three. And then we do a corner cluster in the corner. Same as we've done all the way around. This is going to be exactly the same. Came back into the gap that we started with. Make our last cluster. And then we anchor this side. Now see, this is, an, this is the advantage I was talking about before. I came from the front, so I came through the correct two threads here. It never looks the same from the back. So I can go ahead and come through the back and know that I'm getting the right two threads I need. There we go. Chop, chop. And I'm ready to turn it back over. Start my next color. So, just exactly like we did down here. That's what you're going to be doing here. Follow it exactly. And uh, it's going to be a little while before I meet you out at the edge. Because I think this is going to take me a couple days Especially with my cat helping me. Okay, I'll be back when I get out to the corners. Now this will be the next section I do. And I'll be starting here and going that way on the front. When I come back this way on the back, just like I'm working on the back now, I will chain one and connect to the third crochet here on the heel. And that's what you do with every single section. That's why you need to go, when you're working on the front, you need to go to the next section in the direction you're working. So I'm left-handed, I move to the next section on my right. You're right-handed, you move to the next section on your left. And then you have your heel, and over here you'll have your loose end to connect to your heel. Okay? Here we are at the end of the row. You put your last cluster in your space down here. Same as always. You chain one. You come right over to the top of your chain three. One, two, three. That's the third cluster. This is the top of the chain. Come on. Sneaky. Yes. There we go. Snip that off. I'm going to pull this this little um, section here 
I'm going to pull it down into the last stitch. It makes a smaller knot that way. Then we come back with the blue. We'll be going around this and into our tip. Okay? We'll be doing that with the turquoise. Now, I didn't tell you on the very first one, where are you? On the very first one, you won't have a heel to connect it to. So on the very first one, just leave a really nice long um, tail so that you can uh, chain one and connect your heel, okay? I'm going to go ahead and finish this so I can put the uh, blue on and I'll see you back here. Okay, with your next color, in this case for me is tur turquoise, uh, just connect on in any gap with a slip stitch, chain three and do your cluster. The top of your chain three or the one, two, three, the first top of your cluster will be where you'll finish this round. And when we come back to finish the round, you slip stitch, chain one, pardon me, slip stitch and turn. And we'll do it just like we did in the middle here. Slip stitch, turn, go back into the hole, do your cluster, go in the other direction. Go back to the uh, beginning where we did the inside because that's how you're going to be doing it here when you get to here again. Now on the tips of the corners, we want to go around this. So we're going to go over the top of it. I'm going to go in my little two stitches here. Okay. Oh, come on. Be nice. That's a good boy. And do the cluster right in that tip there. And this is just what we did on the tip of the last one. See there? We came by, we went around this connection here into the tip. And that's what we just did here. So let's do that again. Okay. We just go into that top. Do our cluster. We're doing it right around this chain one between the two sides. And you just go right on to your next cluster. Just like that. See? Covered all around. You do that in the every tip, do your usual corners, cluster, chain three, cluster. Go back and check on the inside square. See how we turned, went back in the other direction with the second row. Do your two rows of, well in this case I did turquoise, and then uh, the next darker blue which was um, Uh, blue Hawaii and then I'll do the two rows of the uh, royal okay so essentially <clears throat> all you're doing now is a granny square you're done with the diamonds you're done adding the sides all you're doing is going around and around around one way stopping reversing change colors go one way stop reverse just make sure you stay on the front side when you do your first 
roll of your color and you'll be fine. So, see you back when I get it all done. And uh, you come back when you got yours all done and we'll see what we got, okay? All right. Well, it's finally done. Finished my last double row of this. I uh, polished it off with the slip stitch, but the front facing me, I just slip stitched into the back loop all the way around. And this gives you this type of a finished front. And the back looks like this, a kind of a raised edge. Now, if you want this for the front, then all you do with your final row is you flip the back around facing you and then you go into the back loops on the top which would be the front loops if you were facing the front so you do exactly this going around going through the back loops only with the back facing you instead of the front you end up with this kind of a of a raised, raised edge looking finish okay and uh, I tried a couple of different designs of outlines, of outsides, and uh, all of them distracted from the grannies. So if you're going to do an outside, I suggest you make it plain, single crochets, half doubles, doubles, something like that if you want a, um, a wider edge here. So let's see what we got here. Our triangle within our triangle within our triangle within our square. Our diamond, our square, diamond. So I think it turned out very well. I think I like it better with the blue than I did with the purple, which is what I did last time. I gotta figure out which one I'm gonna use for. I think I'll use that for the head picture. What do you think? I think that will work. Let me take a picture of that. Hold on, I'll be back. Now, you know what we started out with? 7 ounces, 7 ounces, 7 ounces, 7 ounces, 5 ounces. This is all we have left of our outside color. So if you're going to put a thicker border on it, make sure you have more of this color. Whatever your outside one is. We've got to, about a fourth left of this, I guess. The next color, I've got quite a bit of it. I'd say I got over half a skein. Same way with this. I don't, you know, these are two totally different uses, but you can see side by side, you should be able to see. I can feel it anyway. This is definitely thinner than this. So I'd say this is probably, this is over half a skein, and this is a little less than half a skein. And for the five ouncer, well, um, don't think there's enough to make two of those squares out of this. Um, def I'd say it's definitely less than half of the skein. If you have a bit and you want to find out if it would make another one of the squares you just made, um, using the same size hook, make a plain granny square 12 layers deep, 12 rows deep. If it fits the 12 rows or at least 11 rows plus two sides, you'll have enough to make a square. That way if you have a partial skein and you want to know if it's enough, that's the way to check it, okay? So you would have 12, like for instance, our inner square here is 10. So you'd have 11, 12, or 11 and two sides. And that'll give you enough to do this color to the third level. It's the third level you go clear out to here. And that's where the bulk of it's being used. Okay? Okay, well, that's it. I hope you enjoyed it. I certainly enjoyed making it with you. 
And um, I hope I hit all the bases this time. I believe I kept my hands inside all this time, which is a big plus, right? Okay, I'll wait and see for the questions and the comments and see if I did it right this time. Goodbye, everybody. Happy crocheting.